Episode 17 The Essence The spacious hall of the Temple of the Keeper of the Knowledge was filled with light, and there was a pleasant smell of sweet and spicy, fragrant herbs. The delicate scent enveloped the space, tuning the students into another difficult lesson. They were waiting for the sage, anticipating new knowledge that would give them the opportunity to deal with complex issues and gain important spiritual experience. When the teacher appeared in the hall, the eyes of all those present turned in his direction. Today, a different spiritual conversation was expected, which was supposed to lead them deeper into understanding the essence of man. After greeting the audience, the keeper of the knowledge smoothly walked across the hall and stopped near a large painting with a schematic representation of subtle bodies. At the top of the diagram was the Lord God. With outstretched arms he looked down from heaven, sending to earth a piece of his spirit, Atman. It was this divine part that was the core, the basis of the soul. Then, just below, the following soul shells were located. Causal, mental, astral, and vital bodies. And even lower were the etheric and physical bodies. The coarsest shells that block the abilities of the subtle bodies of the soul. Some of the students already knew this from previous spiritual conversations with a teacher. Others had not yet encountered it, and were just about to comprehend this sacred knowledge. Today they were supposed to learn about the essence, the part where deep questions had arisen in all the students. Teacher, how does the soul relate to the essence? asked Olysea the fair-haired girl with a thin, elegant neck and large gray eyes? Are they one and the same thing? And there is Atman. Is it the same as the soul? Great sage, I ask for your instruction and help. The keeper of the knowledge directed his gaze to the diagram in the painting, urging the girl to look at the image of the spirit of God, Atman which the Lord separated from himself, the basis of our soul. Look. The teacher pointed with his palm to the image of the open eye, on the right and left sides of which were large, beautiful wings spread out. Atman is a part of God, a witness in us, he explained. Then this particle is placed in the first shell of our soul, the causal body, where the entire experience of the soul from the numerous incarnations is accumulated. It turns out that Atman lives in the causal shell, the girl clarified. Yes, that is right, Olysea, the sage confirmed, pointing again to the picture, to where three multicolored spheres were located under each other. And then, the mental, astral, and vital bodies of our soul are attached to it, after which they begin to develop. Each subtle body is connected to a certain human center. The mental body is connected to the mind. When we develop the mind, the mental body also grows stronger. Our emotional center is connected to the astral body. When we begin to experience sublime emotions, the astral body also grows stronger. The vital body is connected to the life force, so when we accumulate it, the vital body develops. This is how our essence grows stronger. The keeper of the knowledge looked attentively at Olysea. It turns out that the essence of man is contained in these three subtle bodies, she clarified, in the mental, astral, and vital. 
Do I understand correctly, teacher? Yes, that is right. The essence is the three subtle bodies that fly apart after the person dies and are given to the soul again in each subsequent incarnation. At first, they are in their infancy. Then, as the person lives, they begin to develop to one degree or another. The essence can vary in strength. For example, modern people do not use their intellectual abilities to the maximum. So often, the mind and mental body develop only to the level of a ten-year-old child. Emotions are often inhibited and suppressed, so the emotional center and the astral body may only develop to the level of a five-year-old child. Teacher, what happens to the soul if a person has a weakly developing essence? A tall, dark-haired disciple asked after listening attentively to the sage's words. If the essence is weak, then it could not develop properly in this incarnation, the keeper of the knowledge explained. The essence is attached to one incarnation. This part of the soul must develop in this incarnation to a certain extent in order to gain the necessary experience and then transfer it to the causal body. Then, when the person dies, this essence goes further into the causal body and becomes a part of it, and all the three bodies fly apart. And then, new incarnations begin. Again, Atman is united with a causal body. Again, the essence and the rest of the body are given. And in the next incarnation, the soul receives the same essence as before? The same student asked. The keeper of the knowledge shook his head negatively. No, there will be new subtle bodies there. When a person dies, his mental, astral, and vital bodies exist in our world for some time, and then they disintegrate. How long will they be around? Olaseya asked looking inquisitively into the eyes of the master. What does it depend on? Each of them has its own lifespan, which depends on their development, said the teacher. The stronger the essence was, the longer its subtle bodies will live in our world. The girl nodded, and then another question was asked in the hall by a miniature student with golden curly hair that escaped from under a light green turban. Great sage, I have a question, she began, choosing her words carefully. Here you say that the essence is three subtle bodies, yet I always thought that it is connected to the instincts of a person, that it is his natural component, and I seem to detect a discrepancy here. How can all this be combined? so as not to get confused. Good question, Martha, the keeper of the knowledge answered, giving the student a warm, understanding look, and began to explain in detail. Indeed, such concepts as soul and body, essence and personality, are often opposed. There is a soul, and there is a body. The body is something separate, that is created by a person's parents, their mother and father. They create the physical body of the child, together with the etheric one, without which it cannot work. And the moment the baby is born, some kind of energy comes from each planet. These energies combine and form the essence of a person, which is the primordium for the development of his other subtle bodies. That is what essence is. The teacher looked at Martha to determine how well she understood him. The woman looked focused and followed the sage closely, trying not to miss a single word. That is, the essence cannot be reduced to instincts only, she clarified, carefully adjusting her turban. Exactly. But it has instincts, too. The keeper smiled. The vital body is connected a little bit 
to the instinctive part of a person. That is, animal instincts are preserved in it. But the essence of the soul is not only the vital body, but also the astral and mental bodies. The keeper of the knowledge looked around at the students, waiting for the reaction to this part of the knowledge. It was evident from the expressions on their faces that intense mental work was going on in their heads right now, naturally giving rise to questions. A sporty guy with delicate facial features, high cheekbones, and a slight oriental charm raised his hand. Teacher, I don't seem to get the right picture either, he admitted with regret in his voice. When we used to say, an essential person, I imagined that this was a person who was very close to nature, like Tarzan, for example. And I also thought, like Martha, that essence is our instincts. Now I understand that I had distorted ideas, and an essential person is someone who has all the three subtle bodies well developed, and he feels them well. The sage nodded in response to the disciples' words. Yes, that is right, Renat. It is very good that you have come to this understanding. Essence is opposed to personality. That is, the essence is our mental thoughts, astral emotions, and vital desires. And there is also a personality. It is someone else's thoughts, emotional reactions, and desires imposed on us. What we should desire and what we should not. Things imposed from the outside are the personality, but the essence is what we truly are. The keeper paused and looked carefully at the disciple. Do you understand? The student nodded eagerly. Yes, teacher. Now I see the big picture. Thanks for the clarification. And at the vital level, Olasea asked, before the conversation went far from the initial topic? After all, the essence can be close to the body, to bodily aspects. Yes, but still, the essence is not the body, the sage patiently explained. The body is the apparatus in which we are on earth, and the essence is a part of the soul that must grow in this life. There are two parts of the soul. The eternal part is the causal body, together with Atman, and the temporary part is the essence that develops in life. Mental, emotional, and vital experience accumulates and forms subtle bodies. How greatly they have developed, how much of this experience we have received, how big the essence has grown, all this determines how much of this will go into the baggage of the causal body later. Olasea followed the sage's thought with concentration, and when he finished, nodded with satisfaction, finding in his words confirmation of the ideas she already had. She looked at the keeper with gratitude and awe, though while a powerful inner work was going on in her head at the moment, in the course of which new realizations arose. Great sage, tell me, do I understand correctly about a person's soul being in its infancy? The student asked again. And if he does not develop his essence, then the soul will remain in this state? The sage looked at Olasea and smiled, a bright transparent smile. Blessed is he who has no soul he intoned in a vibrating low voice. For example, a stone. Blessed is he who has a soul. For example, angels. But woe to the one who has a soul in its infancy. He looked around at the hushed students, who were intently listening to his every word. Because if the soul is in its infancy, underdeveloped, then life will be very difficult for such a person. Teacher, 
Please explain to us what happens to a person in this case, Olisea asked. What is the difficulty of his life? Let us say that the soul developed until the age of five, the keeper of the knowledge began to explain with alacrity, and then it ceases to develop, and the personality, and everything that is alien to us is imposed, and our little essence is enslaved to all these alien things. For example, it wants to sing and dance, yet parents and teachers convince it, saying, you should be an accountant or a lawyer. Thus they bind our essence, do not allow it to develop, and grow the way it needs to. Instead, they force us to be what we do not want to be, and what should not be. Society puts pressure on us from television, advertising, parents, teachers, educators, relatives, and if our essence was developed, then we would not succumb to this pressure, and would just do what we need. But if the essence has stopped developing at the level of five years, then it does not have the strength to resist the pressure, and the personality enslaves it. And how can we identify our essence? another student asked, raising her hand. A middle-aged woman, with attentive sparkling eyes. It is shown in the cosmogram, as far as I understand, but... How exactly are we to understand and identify it? Yes, Maria, that is right, the sage praised the student. But the cosmogram shows the primordium of the essence, what it could be, what prerequisites it has for development. And whether it all develops or not depends on whether the essence or the personality wins. If our essence is developed, we feel exactly what we really want. We understand that I want to sing, and I will sing no matter what my parents or teachers say about becoming an accountant. The teacher paused, giving the students the opportunity to digest the information. There were no indifferent people here. Everyone present was active, absorbing information, and trying to penetrate into the deep essence of things. Understanding could be seen on the faces of many of them. Remember when I told you how I turned on the radio at my grandfather's house and heard religious broadcasts? The keeper of the knowledge asked after a pause, and the students nodded in agreement. That is when I realized that the spiritual path is mine. But at that time, Everyone was building communism, and religion was completely banned. I faced strong opposition from society. Everyone said to me, Are you kidding? You want to become a priest? But there is no God. You are probably sick. You should be sent to a hospital. The keeper of the knowledge smiled slightly, remembering these moments. There was not a drop of anger and aggression in his voice, toward people who had tried to impose their opinions so harshly. Everyone around me was against it, but I clearly felt my essential desire. I understood that this is mine, and I will follow this path to the end. This is the manifestation of the essence. If a person feels this in himself, and in spite of all external influences, goes to the end, then he develops his essence and his soul. When the teacher finished speaking, he paid attention to a man in his forties who stepped forward and raised his hand, indicating his desire to speak out or ask a question. Can I give you an example? he respectfully asked the sage, and having received his approval, began to speak. This is exactly what happened with my brother. His personality won, no matter how hard I tried to help him. He and I initially developed together, started doing yoga, and even opened a yoga club in our city. And then he lost his nerves. Everyone around him began to press on him, saying, What are you doing? 
What were you thinking? It's not a real job. Go work at the factory like all normal people do. So he faced a lot of pressure, and he quickly changed his mind. And since the union had collapsed and all the factories had been closed down, he went to work in the market. In 40 degrees below zero, he stood there and sold shoes next to a pay toilet. He ruined all his health there. And of course, there was no talk about any further development. The man fell silent, trying to fight the rising wave of regret. Constantine, thank you for the example. The teacher supported him, sending the bright energy of kindness and love to the student. But do you now understand why it happened? Yes, teacher, said the man. I understand now. His essence was weak. That's why he didn't have any strong desire for development. The sage nodded in agreement and added, That is right. If the essence is weak and undeveloped, personal influences easily enslave it, and it cannot realize itself, its purpose, its aspiration. And if it is strong, then it can break through everything and grow due to the struggle with the personality. After listening to the Keeper of the Knowledge, Maria raised her hand again. Teacher, you said that essence and personality, body and soul, are opposed. Do I understand correctly that the five subtle bodies at the top are the soul? She pointed with her palm at the scheme. And the physical and etheric bodies at the bottom, they create a single structure of a living body? Is that why they are depicted so separately? Because they are opposed to each other? And they have different tasks, right? And they seem to pull each other in different directions. Either you live for the body, or you live for the soul. Yes, Maria, you understand correctly. We are being pulled in different directions, and there is a confrontation. Essence versus personality. Soul versus body. And in the adult state, can the essence be manifested, the student asked again? For example, in childhood, we understood that we wanted to sing, that it was our inner desire. But let's say we didn't listen to the essence, and instead went to study to be an accountant. Is it true that we miss the chance, that the essence will no longer manifest? The seven treasures of the soul are the highest manifestation of the essence to which we must come. Awareness, conscience, trust in God, love, rigor, selflessness, divine peace, the sage replied. That is what a developed essence should come to. If we manifest these qualities, cultivate them in ourselves, then our essence begins to develop. And it does not depend on how old we are. It is never too late to start. And if external influences capture us, then the essence begins to degrade. Understanding flashed in Maria's eyes, and she looked at the teacher with gratitude. Meanwhile, another student was already asking the question. It was a very beautiful, dark-haired woman, whose whole appearance spoke of softness and femininity, but at the same time there was a great hidden power in her, which was manifested in her movements, gestures, and voice. Teacher, do I understand correctly that if you live under the girdle of the personality— if you do what you are told to do by those programs that were instilled in you by society, you can also feel that now, the student said, looking questioningly at the master. You either act according to the instilled program that sounds in your head, or you act essentially and do what nature in the divine part of the soul tells you. After all, we are constantly faced with this. Every day we sort out the programs, trying to understand what reactions they cause and how to develop in order to overcome these programs. 
And as it turns out, this is how we develop the essence. Yes, Christine, you understand everything correctly, the sage confirmed approvingly. The essence develops from life to life, but it does not manifest itself, since after a person's death, this information is transferred to the causal body, and this information is blocked for us while we are on earth. And in each new incarnation, we are given a new essence that grows and develops from the birth of a person. What is an essence? This is the influence of the planets. When we are born, all the planets affect us and give us their energy. These energies of the planets merge, and the essence appears. It turns out that all horoscopes are based on this, asked Olisea, who had been closely following the teacher's thought all this time. Exactly, the sage confirmed. The primordium of the essence appears from the energy of the planets at our birth, and then this energy begins to grow. All astrology is based on this. God gave us his energy through the energy of the planets, depending on their signs and aspects. Then we develop, and the essence begins to grow and develop to some level, and then it passes into the causal body. But since we are below the causal level on the mental one at most, the keeper again pointed to the diagram hanging on the wall, we do not have access to the memory of all our previous lives. Beloved teacher, Christine spoke again, and I remember you told us that there is also individuality. What is it? Does it also oppose the essence? It is good that you remember this, the sage praised the disciple. Individuality accumulates in the causal body over many incarnations of the soul. Only after death do we get the opportunity to connect with the causal body. And then we immediately remember, Oh, here I lived, here I made mistakes, there I missed a chance for development, and I have so much more to develop now. Teachers passed nearby, but I did not listen to them. Instead, I ran away from life into alcohol, drugs, and somewhere else. And that is why I will have to develop for so many more lives now. I must not miss my chance. What about talents and abilities, Christine clarified? Do we get them at birth? Where do they come from? When our essence passes onto the causal level, there remains a certain tendency. It can pass to us from past lives in the form of talents and abilities. God decides what to give a person and what fate to grant so that there is something to develop. We are born with these talents and abilities, and these tendencies in us can then continue to develop in our current life. Therefore, we must understand what trends are developing in us and go in their direction in order to fully realize the potential granted by God. Teacher, can you tell me, please, what the difference between essential impressions is? Renat asked, stepping forward a little. For example, after we are in the forest, in nature, sitting by the fire, and feeling joyful and calm, can this be called sublime impressions? Forests, mountains, wild, secluded nature. Everything gives very important essential impressions because there is no society there, the sage replied. That is, there are no moments that activate our personality. Therefore, when we are in the forest, we enter into an essential state. There is no one to show ourselves to, no need to put on masks and play roles. We can be ourselves. Our essence is activated and receives impressions from the forest because it is also an essence. There is no personality, no TV, computer, 
internet or newspapers, impressions from nature enter into us, nourish our essence, and it begins to feel better. The student nodded with gratitude for the explanations, and pondering, once again asked, Teacher, does the essence grow from sublime emotions and self-observation? I mean, when you overcome laziness, negative emotions, and bad habits, is this also the development of the essence? And is the will related to the essence? Of course, the keeper of knowledge answered unequivocally and smiled approvingly. Sublime emotions, will, awareness, and all the seven treasures of the soul are related to the essence. And when we manifest these treasures of the soul, then the essence begins to grow in us. And if we do not manifest, then the essence begins to degrade in us. Having finished speaking, the sage looked at the enlightened faces of the disciples. Today's spiritual conversation was difficult, but everyone received a new portion of the knowledge and food for further work on themselves, for the development of their essence. And then the words of a poem sounded in the hall. Following the good tradition, the teacher concluded each spiritual conversation with the students in this way. Evil I meet. It's a despicable sin. Passion wants to take my soul. I was born in a mortal world to leave it forever. In the dark night I often dream of the sun rays and the sea waves. I'd like to get lost in the green of the oak trees. I know the beauty of nature. I'm ready to give my soul to it. I enjoy so much to listen to the babbling of the brook. I'll pray to all the gods for the wonder of salvation, and I know, and I believe, my Savior will work a miracle. We invite you to join spiritual seminars, workshops, and retreats hosted by the Leader Masters. Reveal your superpowers. Find your predestination and accumulate power to gain well-being and bring your goals to life. Send an email saying, I want to join the seminar to our mailbox, and we will give you all the information. See you soon.